Welcome to another video by Ferris Technology. Today we want to talk about the debugging tools that are available for VBA in Microsoft Access. So let's get started. The tool that you'll most often use is literally the immediate window. And so let's see how it works, okay? First off, I can type the name of a subroutine in there that already has a debug.print command in it, and it'll print to the immediate window. Notice this particular one, I wanted to illustrate the fact that you have to scroll to the right to see the entire line because it doesn't have auto wrapping, okay? The next thing is you put a question mark in front of a function like now, meant to print the date. The question mark says print the now the result of the now function. And by doing that, it prints the date that is on the screen. The function is last day of month is a function that we wrote in the current module to see whether or not the date we feed to it is the last day of the month. In this case, June 30th is the last day of the month and it returned a true. And again, the question mark in front of it says print the result of is last day of month. Okay, so the immediate window you'll use quite frequently. You usually use that in conjunction with breakpoints. You suspend execution by setting a breakpoint in the code. When access encounters a breakpoint, execution immediately stops, allowing you to switch to the immediate window to set or examine the value of variables. So let's see how that works. Setting a breakpoint is easy. You'll notice that I just clicked in the gray indicator bar to the left of the statement that I wanted to stop the execution. The breakpoint appears as a large brown dot in the gray bar along the left edge of the code and has a brown highlight behind the code. The text of the breakpoint statement appears in a bold font. To remove the breakpoint, simply click the breakpoint indicator in the margin indicator bar again. Breakpoints are also automatically removed when you close the application. When execution reaches the breakpoint, Access halts execution and opens the module at that breakpoint. You can now use the immediate window to examine the values of variables and perform other operations or use any of the other debugging tools. So in this one example, we're going to set the breakpoint at set the set DB statement and run the code. When the break occurs, in the debug menu, the step into executes the current statement and then moves to the next statement in the program flow of execution. Notice as I execute the statement that we could also use the F8 key. In this case, the DB variable is set and the current line becomes the statement that sets the SQL variable, indicated by the yellow highlight and an arrow in the left margin. At this point, the SQL statement has not been executed, and the value of SQL is still an empty string. Press F8 again to execute the SQL assignment statement and move to the current line, from the current line to the next line. After SQL is set, you can see the value of SQL in the immediate window by using question mark SQL. The locals window is the next thing that you will use. It shows all variables that are currently in scope, saving you from having to examine each variable one at a time. The variable's name, its data type, its current value are displayed. Any line with the, in the locals window that begins with a plus sign will also open to reveal more information. Opening the RS entry in the locals window reveals all the properties of the RS object and its contents. The locals windows can get overrun with variables in a large application or in an application with many variables in scope. The watch window enables you to specify just which variables you want to monitor as you single step through your code. The value of a watched variable changes dynamically as the code runs. You need to be at some kind of a breakpoint to actually see the values. The advantage of using the watch window is that the variables displayed don't have to be from the local procedure. In fact, the variables in the watch window can be from any part of the application. Setting a watch requires a few more steps than using the locals window or setting a breakpoint. Choose view 
Watch window to display the watches window. Choose debug, add watch, or right click anywhere in the watch window and select add watch from the shortcut menu. The add watch dialog box appears. So at the bottom of the dialog box are these options. Watch expression, that's the variable's value you that will dynamically change in the watch window. You must use a breakpoint or a stop statement in order to observe the value of the watched variable. The next one, break when value is true, this option inserts a break whenever the, the value of the watched variable or expression becomes true. Although watching variables in the locals window or watch window can be really entertaining, you can spend a lot of unproductive time hoping to see something unexpected happen. You'll probably find it much more efficient to set a, set a conditional watch on a variable and instruct the VBA engine to break whenever the condition you've established has been met. So the next one is break when value changes. This directive causes access to halt execution whenever the value or variable you put in the expression changes. Obviously, this setting can generate a lot of breakpoints, but it can be useful if a variable is changing unexpectedly and you can't figure out where. The next one is the call stack window. In many applications, you'll have procedures that call other procedures that call still other procedures. You know, to my knowledge, there's really practical no limit on the number of procedures that can be sequentially called in a VBA project. This means you may have a tree of procedures many levels deep, one level of which is causing problems in your application. This situation is particularly true in the case of an application that has been modified many times or when little thought was given to optimizing how the code in the application is used. Even so, some carefully designed applications end up with deeply nested code, making it difficult to understand how all the code ties together. Imagine a function that performs a common operation, such as calculating shipping costs. As a general rule, rather than include this function in every module in the application, you'll put a function into a single module, declare it with the public keyword so that it's recognized and used by the entire application, and then call it from whichever procedure needs a shipping cost calculation. Furthermore, imagine that this application has many such functions and subroutines, each of them calling each other, depending on the application's logic at the moment. Finally, imagine that a user reports that the calculation of the shipping cost appears to be incorrect under some conditions, but not others. You could single step through all the code in the application, hoping to discover the cause of the erroneous shipping fee. However, this approach wouldn't, wouldn't be very efficient. You'd be much better off setting a conditional watch on an important variable within the shipping fee function, forcing the code to break when the condition is true. Using the call stack window, you can view the path the, the VBA engine has taken to reach this particular point in the code. Let's go see how that works. So I'm going to go ahead and set the uh, breakpoint on the RS close. We're going to go ahead and run the code mod call stack one, and you'll notice that it goes all the way through. Now let's see all of the things that it went through in order to get there. First off, we started with procedure one. The next thing, and notice it shows there by double clicking in the call window. And then we could double click on the second one and you see that it shows where that procedure was called. And then notice the call stack procedure three ended up calling using breakpoints, which of course is our last, last module, which has the actual breakpoint. So this allows us to see the path that where it started and how it got to the particular breakpoint that we used. You'll need some experimentation to see how this actually can benefit you by putting the breakpoint in the particular place and finding how it go, jumps through the code. But you'll find it useful, useful, especially in complex coding situations. So I hope you were able to get something out of this video. And if so, please hit that like button. And uh, if you think that this whole series is valuable to you, be sure to subscribe and come back and see some more videos for us. Talk to you later. Bye.